Yeah, so um, interviewing for skill aptitude and work ethic and hired, I, I think really what it speaks to is the interview process uh, in general. And I find the interview process to be really difficult, but it is more science than I used to think it, it actually was. First of all, this is where the core values come into place. There, Jake, you know, I got to tell you, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people on the call that are going to be shaking their heads going, you know, uh, this is not what I want to hear. I got to tell you, if you're, if you're not at least introducing your core values into your hiring process, then along the way, when you have problems with your associates, they're problems that probably could have been seen and foreseen at the interviewing process. So I encourage you to sit down, find out what your three to seven main core values are and bring them up at the interview process and ask your, the person that you're interviewing, what are your core values? And if they're not at least close to alignment, I can promise you that the relationship is not going to work. You need to know what you're looking for as well when you're interviewing people. Now that may sound easier than it is, but if you're looking for a GP, what you're saying is that you're looking for a, a dentist, you're looking for an associate that has the skill set to do pretty much all different facets of dentistry. If you're looking for a GP and somebody tells you, I don't do surgical extractions and I don't do endo, then that's not a GP. So make sure you understand what you're looking for. Would you rather have a person who's just a great person and an average clinician? Or would you rather have a lousy person and a great clinician? And I think the answer to that is super easy. Uh, what, when, you're, when you're interviewing, what you want to find out is what, is what does the candidate need to be trained on or in and what can you not train them on? In other words, you can't train morals and ethics, okay? So if you're talking to someone who is telling you Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I want to make a lot of money. I mean, that's, that's my number one priority is to make a lot of money. You might want to ask a few more questions about that and see if that is going to end up in a situation where you may find that their morals and ethics are not in line with yours. And I guarantee you, Jake, there are people that are shaking their heads yes to this one right there. Um, so, you know, the dentistry we can train. We, we, can, we can take people and train them on dentistry, but you can't train morals and ethics. And then the last thing I would say about interviewing would be there are, there are five F's sometimes that when you're trying to sell the job to somebody and interviewing is competitive now, right, Jake? I mean, we know that there are people out there that are making this, uh, they're, they're making some offers to people. And so you may want to consider working in these five F's and the five F's are, are fit, which is really, again, those, that's a core value issue, family, freedom, fortune, and fun fit, family, freedom, fortune, and fun. And so when you can check all those five boxes uh, when you're interviewing somebody, then I think it's a, good, it's a good place to start and you can take them to the next level. Charles, could you, uh, could you walk them through just quickly, um, step by step, your, you know, just real quick, uh, what your interview process was at South Texas? I mean, maybe even what it was at the start and then what you learned and then what you actually landed on. Yeah, um, so what I learned was that in the beginning, I had a terrible interview process because the interview became about me talking about me and how great I was. Uh, that's not an effective interview process. You really want to get them talking about them. And I know that you're all shaking your heads out there that you already know this. Try to put them into an ethical dilemma. Oh, somebody asked what the fourth F was. Fit, family, freedom, fortune. Okay, we got to make money and then we want to have fun doing it. Um, so try to, when I, what I learned was I tried to put them in ethical dilemmas to see just exactly if I could pull out who they were. So I would ask them questions like, what would you do if you saw somebody stealing some bleaching gel from the office? Um, you know, that, that's a, it's a pretty easy, simple question, but you, you would not believe some of the answers that you would get. Um, they range from, I would call the police to, well, I stole bleaching gel at my last job too, you know? So whatever you, whatever you get there, just don't be too surprised. Uh, what would you do if you saw an employee that shared with you that they called in sick one day and all of a sudden you saw them, you know, at Nordstrom's that night shopping, you know? Try to put people into situations where they're going to have to think in a moral and ethical fashion because, again, we can train the dentistry but we can't train or change 
morals and ethics. And then the last one I would say to that is, is, is create scenarios for them. One of the best, and this wasn't mine, but I would love to do this one time, is that uh, somebody said, ask them to bake a cake. And then while they're baking the cake, throw obstacles in their way. So the first part about baking a cake is, well, I got to go to the store. Okay, great. Let's go to the store. By the way, your car is broken. And you just keep throwing obstacles at them while they're trying to bake this cake. And you're, A, you're trying to see if they get frustrated. B, you're trying to see if they have some problem solving skills. And it can be kind of fun too. All right. So feel free to, to type your questions in the Q&A. We'll come back and, and answer some of them. And we'll keep going into the principles. And uh, we'll keep the Let me throw one more thing at you, Dick, that I think is really important. Yeah. This is definitely a write it down. You want to be crystal clear about your expectations of what you're wanting from this person that you're about to hire. And that should be written down in the form of expectations, my opinion, uh, not just a job description. You need to be very specific about what you're going to want this person to do and perhaps even how much you're going to want them to do. And we can talk about that a little bit later when we get to retention. All right, we got your, some of your questions that you like to ask here. We'll oh yeah, on. well, so right. These, these are more of the questions of a uh, more clinical aspect, but I found, and you guys may, and girls may find this too, across the country, man, the scope of what people can do is all over the place. I had people tell me, that they could, they'd never done a surgical extraction in dental school. Um, you know, that was pretty hard for me to believe, but there are people out there that have never done that. There are two things that I will tell you, and maybe you've run across this. If an if a applicant had not done a fair amount of endodontics coming to me, I was not going to get them to do endo. They just, they'll do it, and then I'll have to send it out to be redone. But that was a real stickler. I could not train people to do endodontics well. Surgical extractions I could train. Do you use amalgam filling material? I mean, I know that that question is dating me for sure. And can you design a basic removable partial denture? Um, ask your associates that question and watch them sh uh, scratch their head on that one. But if they can do that, you want to hire them. All right. Any quick tips here? Yeah, these are just some great questions to ask too. You know, there's these are questions that are going to kind of bring out more of their humility, if you will. Um, I always used to say, you know, humility is just probably one of the best traits a person can have when I want to work with them. I want somebody who wants to learn and I want somebody that can be humble to do it. So I'm asking them ways that they think that they can improve themselves. Or where do they need improvement? Um, and don't forget, yeah, document all of your conversations, you know, that you're having with these associates with your interviews. Uh, and, and also the other thing is, is that you need to at least be asking everybody some can of the same questions. They don't, you don't have to ask them all the same questions, but if you're not asking them the same questions, then it gets really hard to evaluate people uh, apples to apples.